No, I think we're live. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shay Ali here with you on Inspired Online. Um, and I was wondering whether to go live today or not, but I thought, let's do it. You know, let's wish everybody out there a very, very happy new year. Um, I know for most of us today, I on a normal year, I'd never dream of uh, going live or doing other things on New Year's Eve. I'd probably be getting dressed to go out. Um, you know, I actually don't go to so loads of wild parties or anything like that. Um, my favourite types of New Year's were actually going to house parties and things like that. And then when last year my friend said to me, let's go out in Soho, I was like, oh my God, really? <laughs> um, but I'm glad we did because that's not an option right now. Anyway, whatever you're doing this year, I think, first of all, like, be kind to yourself. I know lots of people are putting so much pressure on themselves saying, you know, I just wish today was over and um, I wish I didn't have to go through tonight. And you know what? You don't have to. There is no shame in going to bed or doing whatever it is to make you happy. And in the circumstances that we're in right now, you know, what is it that would make you happy? So just go do that and it's all good, right? Um, but I'd like to share in this uh, little talk that we have some thoughts for New Year's Eve and for the new year ahead. And I've always thought that, you know, it'd be nice to spend a New Year's um, going through intentions and, uh, you know, I never actually then did it with anyone and maybe I could just do it with myself tonight I don't know what I'm going to do but um you know uh, it, it's a lovely idea if you want to celebrate just walking into something new and how would you like that to be you know um a lot of the messages I've also received some of them are, are quite jokey about you know the fact that we can't do anything this year but some of them also are messages of hope and for those of us that have had New Year's Eve already, you know, saying that 2021 looks a lot better. So how about we hold that as a vision that um, even if this year wasn't great for you and it wasn't great for many people, that 2021 can be fantastic. And how would you like that to be? So there are a few perspectives on uh, goals and whether you should set them, whether you should not. Um, and a lot of people, you know, it's it's an old joke that if you make a New Year's resolution, you'll probably break it by mid-January. And a lot of the gyms are looking to, to make money at this time as well, knowing that people are not going to show up. So what can you do? Well, I've got um, a few ideas around this. Uh, I used to set a lot of goals uh, on New Year's Eve and carry them through into the year. I don't necessarily do that now, um, but I will um, share what I do now and then share what you can do if you do want to set goals. So what I've done for the last few years is just set a word of the year. And this word is your theme that carries you through through the year and so rather than thinking about okay I've got this list of intense goals that I want to fulfill um, you know it's just a theme a spirit that you can always go back to and think right what did I decide then um, I'm going to go for my word of 2019 rather than for my word of 2020 for the simple reason that my 2020 word was very deeply personal so um you know it's it's gone well but that's all I will say around that but uh the 2019 word um was nurture uh for me and uh, I always go away with my big brother Krish Saroy um at the beginning of the year and we have a weekend where we figure out okay what's our word going to be how does this year look how do I want it to look and in 2018 December 2018 I'd gone to uh, Tony Robbins, Date with Destiny, I was working at the event and, um, you know, it really dawned on me that I need to look after my own self-care and that, that was so key. Um, you know, my work is thankfully, I'm not someone that has like work challenges and things like that. So my goals are maybe different from what other people's might be. Um, you know, that was really crucial for me. And that theme has carried in into this year as well, because 
you know, it's about setting good boundaries and, you know, setting up my day in a way that really takes care of me. So, you know, when do I want to see clients? How do I want to start my day? And, you know, just having that word nurture with that theme of self-care behind it was super helpful um, as my guiding light rather than thinking, right, you know what, I need to lose loads of weight or I need to join a gym. I was already a gym member you know, and all that sort of thing. So I found that really, really helpful. And then even for this year, I will tell you this, you know, it was to do around my self care and my health as well. Um, And it's gone really well. So I think rather than having that, you know what, this year is going to be the year that I lose 20 kilos or whatever it is. um, Having that theme was so much more helpful. And, you know, it's easier to achieve as well. And when you achieve something, you can celebrate, you can always celebrate. Uh, And God knows, we all need more reasons to do that everyone everywhere, um, at all times, I think. So then a perspective on goals, Um, and I'll use this example of losing weight because it's something that is quite tangible that people have approached me about recently. And um, in my post about weight loss, you know, um, I'd said, I'm not gonna be a weight loss mentor. I'm not gonna do like some membership program that you can join or anything like that. You know, I'm just someone with a story and a journey. But I have had people reach out to me going, do you know what, how did you do it? Because um, I'd really like to to do that for myself. And I, you know, think, okay, well, let's use that as an example. But whatever your goal is in life, uh, whether it's around weight or whether it's around business or love or whatever it is, you know, I think this this is a really helpful little thing. So, again, going back to the world of Robbins, um, I love this frame. Um, it's not just about setting a goal, but it's about, you know, how are you going to approach that? Um, And he's got this very simple strategy um, or simple uh, technique, which is three steps. You need to take care of your state, your story and your strategy. So um, strategy is all over the place. So going into how to lose weight or, you know, how to run an online business or anything like that, you know, quite frankly, you could go on Google, you could go on Facebook, and there's lots of people out there that will give you all the strategy in the world. Um, and often, if even if we know that stuff, why is it that we don't follow through? You know, um, using the weight loss as an example, yeah, you know, everyone knows how to lose weight. I can eat less, I can work out more, you know, I can change my diet, I can get the right help. It's not about that. So, you know, what are these other pieces? So let's look first at state. So your state is about, I think, your emotional state. Are you ready to do this? Are you ready um, to, you know, step into this new being? It could be that, you know, I I want to increase my business. I want to be self-employed, whatever it is. Um, If you're not in the right state, then you're not going to do it. Um, You know, and it is a year where we want to be kind to ourselves. I think that's a a thing about 2020. So if you don't do it, you don't want to like beat yourself up or anything like that. But you've got to get yourself into this resourceful state of mind. And I can't emphasize just how important that is. And so for me and the weight loss, um, if you can believe this, I didn't necessarily at the beginning of the year, well, I didn't do it. I didn't set it as a goal going, um, I've actually lost 28 kilograms from my heaviest point to now. So it's quite a lot, about 60 pounds or so um, in American terms. But, um, you know, I didn't necessarily set that out as a goal. What I did, the state was, I want to take care of my body. Um, I want to do things that I enjoy. And, you know, what I enjoyed was body pump. So I did that. And, you know, I didn't do it feeling super attached to whether this is going to make my weight drop or anything. Um, It was just like, this is boosting my endorphins, and I really need this this year. Um, And that's it, you know, so I think that's another key point as well. When you're in state, it's about not being attached as well. I find that, you know, one of the reasons why my work has gone well, why the weight has gone down um, is you know, I don't have super attachment to um, to those outcomes. I mean, they're, they're a great to have and I want them, but, 
you know, I'm not like desperate going, oh God, my life is going to be over if I don't have it. Um, so, you know, I think that is, it's a fine line to walk, but it's an important one. And when you can be in that place of non-attachment, it's, things become a lot easier. Um, and it's so hard to say, you know, especially when, um, you know, around people's work and stuff and they, they want to make themselves fly. And I can't really um, explain, um, or probably not the best person to explain how you can walk that line of non-attachment. But all I can say is if you do, then the results just come like that. And it's awesome, right? Um, and then the next piece, the story. So let's talk about what your story is. And to me, that's synonymous with, you know, your identity and who are you in this world? And who are you, who are you being? Who do you want to be? And what stories do you tell yourself? So for the people that have asked me, how is it that you lost the weight? Um, you know, some of the work that I did, as some of you know, was around hypnotherapy. And some of the stories that I was telling myself, um, the hypnotherapy, by the way, wasn't, um, it wasn't the type of hypnotherapy where they're like, well, you will not eat this thing and I'm going to hypnotize you to not like chocolate anymore and stuff like that. I just thought, do you know what, I, I don't like all that. But it was more around digging into those inner beliefs and what's really going on inside. And that's what we dug at, you know, what was my story? What was it that was holding on to um, that, you know, made me look a certain way? Um, and once we dug into that, you know, that's when it started to shift. Um, I remember one of them, it was all very metaphorical and stuff. Um, so it was a, a hypnotic state, but somehow I had um, attached um, being slim to being beautiful to being unsafe was one of them um you know I just felt that I would uh, get too much attention and you know that would lead me to circumstances where I was unsafe and I'd like subconsciously I'd made a promise to myself that you know I'm going to do what I can to not be beautiful um so yeah, you know, and it, it didn't make any logical sense. It's not something that I was even consciously aware that I was doing that. But it was a story that I had been running inside. And then your subconscious is trying to take care of you. So you're going to make that happen. So even though people say, look, you know, you've been beautiful every time that I've seen you and known you no matter what your way. Um, you know, I think my subconscious was trying to help me out to, to manifest that particular story. Um, so what stories do you have that are keeping you that way? Um, you know, and if it is around weight, some of them might be around, I have more gravitas if I'm more overweight, I have had that. Um, you know, it could be if it's, a, it's around a business, have you created a subconscious ceiling for yourself that, you know what, if I become too successful, people aren't going to accept me anymore, or my life has to significantly change or anything like that. So it's really worth like digging deep and thinking, what story are you living? And what story do you now want to live? And are you really ready for that? And, you know, while we're not going out on New Year's Eve, maybe just have a deep dive and think about those kind of stories. And, you know, what story is it that you want to create in, in 2021? Because, you know, you can create whatever it is that you like, um, but you just need the right foundations to do it. And then from there, the strategies are easy. You use whatever calls to you. Some strategies may or may not work and, you know, um, I think it was Einstein that said, um, if the definition of madness is if something doesn't work, then you do it again, expecting the same results. So, you know, it's just about um, try something else, try something else, try something else. And eventually, you know, that door will open and, and you'll get whatever it is your heart desires. So I hope that's been helpful. 
Um, I'm wishing you all an amazing New Year's Eve and New Year. Um, that sounds silly to say. A lot of us are just going to be sitting at home this New Year's Eve, but it doesn't mean that it can't be great. So whether that's like going to bed at 10 or earlier, or whether that's, you know, celebrating with your friends on Zoom, or there's, you know, lots of online uh, dance parties and all sorts of things going on. So find something that whatever the parameters are in your local area just makes your heart happy because it is possible to have that and you will. And I know that 2021 will be, um, fingers crossed, a much better year for us all, um, filled with lots of hope primarily. And so may you have all that you wish for for next year. So until next time, when I will have a guest back rather than just rambling on by myself, uh, I've been Shay Ali. This is Inspired Online. And um, I love that you watch this. So, you know, if you are, if you enjoyed this and would like to hear some of our other talks, please um, visit us on www.facebook.com forward slash inspired stage. Um, we also have a YouTube channel and a website and all of that where you can check us out. And fingers crossed at some point next year, hopefully we can go back to our live events as well. But for now, uh, sending you all lots of love and hopefully our paths will cross again very soon. Bye bye.